Hey, I'm Anna. And I'm Marshall. And today's big idea is the Holy Spirit is God in us. Now, I realize that you might ask yourself, what does that actually mean? And that might sound a little weird. But what it means for us as Christ followers is that God is always with us. And that's actually really cool. Totally. So before we give too much away, let's watch this God story. What size was the lumber that was used to make the ark? Two by two. Hi friends, my name is Paige. So at school, I do a lot of plays. And every time before we go on, my teacher gives us all a great pep talk. And it really helps me with all the nerves and how scared I am, and her words just stick with me. And that leads me to today's big idea. The Holy Spirit is God in us. So last time in our series, The Rock, we learned the job that Jesus gave us to do, to go and make disciples. We also heard about a promise that Jesus gave too. He said he would be with his disciples always. Well, today's story is about how he is with his disciples always, just maybe not like they expected. This story is from the book of Acts. Acts is the book that comes just after the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is written by the same writer as the book of Luke. And so at the beginning of Acts, we hear the writer of Luke say, Dear Theophilus, I wrote about Jesus in my earlier book. You see, the writer is sending this as a message to someone named Theophilus to tell him all of the amazing stuff about Jesus and his disciples. He says that before Jesus left earth, he gave orders to those he had chosen, just like we learned last time. After Jesus' death, he appeared to people over a period of 40 days. He spoke about God's kingdom during that time. One day, Jesus was eating with them when he told them not to leave Jerusalem until they received the gift that the Father has promised to them. Jesus said, John baptized with water, but in a few days we will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then the disciples gathered around Jesus and asked, Lord, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? Let's read from the book of Acts to see what he said. You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. After Jesus said that, he went up to heaven, and the disciples watched him as he went. While he was going up, they kept on looking at the sky. Then two angels stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you, but he will come back in the same way. So Jesus was gone into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father. Jesus had given them instructions to wait in Jerusalem to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, whatever that meant. They probably didn't really have any idea what that would look like. But in Acts 2, we're told that there was this day called Pentecost where all the believers were gathered in one place. Suddenly, a sound came from heaven, like a strong wind blowing. It filled the whole place where they were sitting. Then, imagine this. They saw something that looked like fire in the shape of tongues sitting above each of their heads. How cool is that? All of them were then filled with the Holy Spirit. This whole scene is so cool, and it is just what Jesus had promised them. He would be with them always. The Holy Spirit was going to baptize them. This was it. I don't think they had any idea how amazing a thing it would have been, but this was it. And this was the Holy Spirit in them. And the Holy Spirit is God in us. Okay, now here's the thing. When we make a decision to follow Jesus as Lord of our lives, then we too get the Holy Spirit living in us. So the Holy Spirit has filled every single Christ follower who has ever lived. That means the same Holy Spirit that lives in me, lives in you and you and you. That's amazing. That's God with us everywhere and always. My name's Paige, I had a blast and I'll talk to you soon. What, what was that? Oh, turn to the person beside you and answer the following questions. Oh, before the time runs out. Question time. When Jesus had gone to heaven, the disciples all met together. Then the Holy Spirit came with the sound of rushing bulls, shoppers, wind, or sports cars. The Holy Spirit filled all the who were there, men, women, kids, or believers. Game time!
time. Sticky situation. How many times can you say the keepers before things get sticky? Say it with me. The Lord is my rock and my place of safety. He is the God who saves me. My God is my rock. Psalm 18, verse 2. Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit helps us witness to people about Jesus all across the world? Absolutely, and the fact that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead mm -hmm. lives in all Christ followers means that we have the opportunity to love and encourage each other as we've been loved and encouraged. Totally, so we're gonna hear a story from our friend Jackson and how the Holy Spirit helped encourage him through some tough times in his life. I know that burritos are delicious, I know that my family loves me, and I knew from a very young age that Jesus loved me, cared for me, and was always gonna be there for me. I'm Jackson Kuhn from Perry Sound, Ontario, and even though I knew God from a very young age, it did not mean that I didn't have any struggles. I grew up playing hockey. Uh, I started when I was three years old. Uh, for me, hockey was always a family event. It was something I did with my family. Uh, my father would make a, a pond rink for us in behind our house uh, every year. Um, and it wasn't until much later in life that I thought I'd even want to do it competitively. It was something that we did just for fun uh, as a family uh, with my brothers. Um, and as I grew older, it became more and more competitive and I started to see some of the opportunities that I could have with it. And it was in those opportunities that really made me strive for excellence in the game of hockey. One really challenging thing that happened to me when I was younger was uh, when I was nine and a half, my uh, father passed away in a tragic accident. And that really was the catalyst for change in my life and how I started to realize um, more who God was, what was he about, was he there for me? Um, and this was really a real life test about was I going to be able to follow this so-called God and was he gonna be there for me? I really felt like when I was 11 years old that I was on a path that was good, and I thought, how could I be on a good path? And some of those examples would be um, my brother being, my older brother being so strong and so willing to lead me and still be there for me. And he was such a good kid, and I thought, wow, how is he like that? And if he wasn't a good kid, surely I wasn't gonna be good, because I was following him so closely. Uh, we had so many men from the community pour into my life, and I thought, Man, there's no way they would do that on their own time if they weren't inspired by God because God knew that I needed that in those moments. So I came to this point where um, I knew that God was real and I had felt him and I've experienced him. And the Holy Spirit was clearly alive in me. And I got to this point through just so many people telling me, there's something special about you. You're so much fun. Like, you know, I, you're so mature for your age. And I thought, no one taught me this. It had to be God, and I realized at that moment, just, to, just right around 13 years old, that God was enough, that He would take care of me through any valley, and He is there in the mountaintops, but it seems to be in those valleys that we need Him most, and we look for Him. And I had felt that I had hit the lowest valley of any secular point. Dying is the end. It's, there's no good there and God created something beautiful out of it. 
So after high school, I went right on to play um, university hockey, which in and of itself was a miracle, actually. <laughs> and uh, through university, I really grew, and I grew more in my faith, and I grew to understand more that um, my life was simply an opportunity to serve God, and that wherever He sent me, I would go and I would serve whatever purpose He had for me. And through university, it wasn't always easy, uh, and I had a lot of work to do because I knew that God was going to open doors down the road. I had that feeling, and sure enough, after my last year of university, I was able to go on and play in Finland, and then also uh, in Germany for three more years. And in that time, I was able to be salt and light in those places, and I knew that even though those places weren't always going to be places where God was talked about, um, but I knew that the Holy Spirit working through me could be a light and a salt to some of those guys, and some of those guys I still talk to today, and I know that I inspire them day in and day out. Today, I'm back in Perry Sound, married with one baby boy. His name is Michael. I currently teach in Wasoxing First Nation, grades six, seven, and eight. And I know that in my life with Christ, in my walk still, that I have a lot to learn. And I still know that God's gonna teach me more and more about how he's enough, and I hope that inspires you. Question time. When Jackson was 11 years old, what was his experience of God? How do you know that God is with you? I love how Jackson was able to recognize that the people in his life, his older brother, men from the community, were actually inspired by the Holy Spirit to be an example for him and encourage him. And the fact that at such a young age, he understood that God is enough just shows that the Holy Spirit was working in him. And it brings us back to our big idea. The Holy Spirit is God in us. Absolutely. So let's break off into small groups and see what this looks like in our own story. 